Magandang araw po sa lahat ng mga kapwa ko PNU1, sa aming mga professors at sa buong PNU administration, at sa lahat po ng mga viewers na nanonood ngayon. Welcome po sa isa na namang episode ng online series ni Inang Pamantasan, kung saan ang pagkatuto ay walang hangganan. Ito ang PNU Talks. Ako nga po pala si Mary Joy A. Villarreal, proud alumna ng Batch 2014 at nagtapos ng Bachelor of Secondary Education, Major in Mathematics mula sa ating pamantasan, ang Philippine Normal University, Manila. Ako po ay nagmula sa FSTEM na dati tinatawag na College of Science. Sa loob po ng tatlong taon, ako ay naging membro ng PNU The Thespian Society. Ito po ay isang theater organization sa PNU. At kasabay po nito, nagsulat din ako bilang news correspondent at editor-in-chief sa PNU Math Club Signum. Ito naman po ang official newsletter publication ng Math Club sa PNU. Sa kasalukuyan po, ako ay isang public high school math teacher sa Kaloka National Science and Technology High School. Ang school year 2019-2020 ay ang aking unang taon para makapagturo sa isang public school. For four years, nagturo po ako sa isang private school, sa School of St. Anthony sa Lagro, Quezon City. At isang taon naman po bilang part-time college instructor sa University of Caloocan City, kung saan ako ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon na magturo ng mga first-year eduk students. Kasalukuyan ko rin pong tinatapos ang aking master's degree sa University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City under the program Master of Arts in Education, Major in Mathematics Education. At masaya po ako na ako ay nabigyan ng pagkakataon dito sa PNU Talks para makapag-share ng isang topic na malapit sa puso ko bilang isang math teacher, ang data presentation. Kaya naman, ako po ang inyong magiging learning from home body sa episode na ito. So to our dear viewers, in this episode, I will be sharing with you about data presentation. So I titled my lecture today as Data Presentation 101, Tips and Tools in Creating Reliable and Presentable Infographics. I know that data presentation as a lesson is a very broad topic, but I hope I could just give you bite-sized information, kaya nilimit ko lang siya sa tatlo, tatlong T, types, tips, and tools. Just recalling why I chose this topic, no? Um, around first week of May, I, rec I recalled Dr. Joseph Entondo and Prof. Myla Detencio invited me for this talk. And when they asked me what could be the possible topic that I could share in this um, episode, I really thought of giving this data presentation. Hindi pa siya ganun ka-specific nung tinanong nila ako. Wala pa talaga akong um, idea kung ano yung magiging title nito. But I really chose data presentation. I remember during that time, sumakto naman na medyo fresh pa nun yung um, nag-trend na post regarding a misleading and mismatching graph and question. This is posted by a news agency, the official Facebook page of a news agency. And nag-trend siya kasi ito yung tanong tapos yung graph ay misleading. So, I really chose this topic personally because I saw the importance of recalling such basic topic. So, masasabi ko na ito talaga yung naging hugot ko bilang isang math teacher, um, kung bakit ito yung isi-share ko sa inyo for this episode. Kasi, I remember when I was in elementary, naturo naman sa atin yung mga types of graphs. Bago tayo dumating sa high school, naturo yun. Then, when we reach high school, if we have elective subjects such as basic stat or elementary stat, then we can encounter this as well. Pero hindi siya yung sobrang tinuturuan ka talaga on how to present data. Kasi we have to remember the steps in statistics regarding data. We start from the collection. After we collect data, we need to organize those data. And then we need to summarize. 
and then if there's um, applicable statistical treatment to be used on those data, yun na yung papasok yung analysis then before we present. So, pagdadaanan natin lahat ng mga proseso na yun before we could reach the data presentation. And that kind of concept or skill is a basic one. Pero hindi ito yung sinasabi natin na basic ay madali lang. Kasi diba, kapag Pinoy, whenever we say basic, there is a tendency that we mean basic would mean madali. But as an educator, you would understand that when we say basic, it should mean fundamental. That when these fundamental skills or concepts were not mastered by our learners, then there would be difficulty later on. It will be very difficult for them to face more complex problems. It will be difficult for them to um, learn new complex skills. Kasi hindi nga na-master yung fundamental skills, yung mga basic skills. That's why we need to um, recall this foundation para hindi din tayo mahihirapan. Okay, so to start, let us understand first what an infographic is. Actually, the word infographic is a clip compound. It's a combination of information and graphics. As we define it, this is simply a graphic visual representation of information, data, or knowledge intended to present information quickly and clearly. Kaya nga sobra siyang naging um, sinasabi nating mabenta pagdating sa social media because sometimes people would not really scrutinize all the details. They would not really read every line of the article. They, um, sometimes a graph, a visual representation will just be enough to understand an information. Kaya madalas nang ginagamit sa ngayon yung mga infographics. Okay, so to just give you some examples, um, let's take a look at this. This is from Mayor Vico Soto's official Facebook page, which was posted last April 30. So they used this graph a time series chart, a time series graph, to present the, conf the number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Pasig City. So, obviously, this is a cumulative um, number of cases. Ito naman, ang pinapakita dito is the, uh, the confirmed COVID-19 cases in the whole Philippines. Pinapakita yung paggalaw ng mga nahahawa na ng COVID-19 dito sa bansa natin. And they used bar graph, combination of bar graph and line graph. So, this is from the official Facebook page of ABS-CBN posted last April 10. Ito naman, this is from the Facebook page of Mr. Chris Monterola, who is an educator and a physicist. So, on his post, he actually used an infographic to show uh, the number of COVID cases in the Philippines. And through his infographic, He's actually showing the prediction that later on, what could be the trend of the increase in number of the confirmed cases. And he's actually showing comparison between and among the countries such as Italy, South Korea, Germany, United States, Switzerland, and Iran. Ito naman yung post ng Earthshaker Philippines. So, kung pinafollow nyo sila sa Facebook and sa Twitter, you will be familiar na talagang lagi silang gumagamit ng infographics. Not only during this pandemic, but since there are typhoons or even some volcanic eruptions, they use infographics to update their followers. So, here they show the COVID-19 cases in the Philippines and they emphasize the comparison between the reported deaths and recoveries. Ito yung daily reports nila. So, this was posted last April 2, 2020. And another one coming from an LGU Facebook page sa Malabon City. Here, they did not use any graphs but they actually used table to show the number of 
COVID-19 cases in their barangay. So, ito naman ay per barangay. So, that was last May 14 only. And then this one is from the official Facebook page of ZMA News, wherein they use table to present the important details of each patient. This was posted last March 9, 2020. So during that time, medyo bago pa yung pandemic dito sa Pilipinas. Kakaunti pa lang yung kaso. So they were able to record 20 patients. What they did is to use code for each patient and then they showed the age, the citizenship, and then the address or the city where these patients live so that we'll have an idea about the database of the confirmed COVID-19 cases during that time. What I have shown you are just few examples of the infographics that were used during this pandemic outbreak here in the Philippines. Dito natin makikita yung relevance na babalikan natin yung topic na ganito sa ngayon. And what's good thing about the demand on the uses of infographics is that we get to see the different types of it, the different graphs and charts, and even the possible errors that we could commit whenever we are using even the most basic types of graphs. Dahil sa na-expose tayo sa mas maraming examples, nakikita natin yung possibility na meron din palang nagkakamali pa rin kahit dun sa pinaka-basic type of graphs and charts. And possibly na ito ay dahil hindi natin na-master yung tinatawag nating fundamental skills na pinag-uusapan natin kanina. And with that, we would like to start the discussion with the introduction of the three types of data presentation. Ano-ano nga ba yung paraan kung paano tayo nagpe-present ng data? So we have to understand that there are three ways on how we can present data. Or ito rin yung tinatawag nating three types of data presentation. It could be textual, it could be tabular, or graphical. So the first way on how we can present our data is through textual presentation. So this means you are putting your important figures into text. So this is giving a more detailed result to your readers, to your audience. And this means that you are noting important figures in your um, data set. At kapag sinabi nating important figures, this could be descriptive measures in statistics such as mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation, and so on. This could also um, give the total number of frequencies, percentage, or the minimum and maximum values of a given data set. So through this textual presentation, you can actually give a summary statistics in a more elaborated form. Textual presentation would be best to use if you want to highlight important figures in your data set and you want to explain it further. So here's an example of a data set that was presented using text. You would see that all the results are presented using sentences. And it highlights important figures such as the percentage and standard error on the given result. So this post is from Dr. R.A. Victoria, who is actually a PNU mathematics professor. The next type is the tabular presentation. This means that we are presenting our data using a table or a matrix. The figures that we are to present must be arranged in columns and rows. Tabular presentation is best used for easy reading and analysis of the data being presented. Presenting information through the use of a table allows us to compare and look for relationships between and among the variables that we are using within a given data set. Just like this example where a table shows the number of NCOV confirmed cases in the Philippines per day and we have different variables being considered such as the number of confirmed cases, the date, the number of new cases, the percentage increase per day, the active cases, the total recovery, and then the total number of deaths. 
So using this table, we can easily compare the entries per day from April 30 up to May 13. At ang panghuling type ng data presentation ay yung tinatawag nating graphical presentation. So this type will be an essential part for our main topic which is all about infographics. But please take note that I will just be focusing on the three common types of graphs which are the following, bar graphs, pie graph, and time series graph. So earlier, na-mention natin yung observation that during this pandemic, information and updates about the COVID-19 cases were given using infographics. And all the statistical results, statistical updates, were presented using graphs and charts. So ang tanong, bakit ang doon sa tatlong types ng data presentation, mas madalas ginagamit yung graphical presentation. So, here are the reasons. So, una, graphical presentation is used because it's a good way of communicating the numerical figures that we can find in the table. What does it mean? So, kahit na halimbawa may ginamit tayong table um, to present the numerical data that we gathered, it's still easier to understand graphs kasi yun na yung pinaka-summarized version niya. Doon pa lang sa graphs, makikita mo na whether the numbers or the values are high or low. Pangalawa, graphical presentation allows us to compare different groups or series. So, for example, gumagamit tayo ng pie graph, kaya natin kaagad makita kung anong category, anong slice yung may larger proportion, may larger percentage, kumpara dun sa may mas maliit na part. If you're using bar graph, we can observe whether it's taller than the other bars or is it wider than the other bars. And if you're using time series chart or time series graph, you can observe the trends. Does it go up or does it go down? Or maybe it's flat. So, Using graphical presentation, madali nating nakukumpara yung mga groups and series. Lastly, charts or graphs are helpful tools in facilitating data analysis. Bakit? Kasi hinahayaan nito na makita natin yung mga relationship na nag exist between namang the variables sa binibigay na dataset sa atin. So, kita kagad natin kung sila ba ay connected or not? Kung ang isa ba ay may effect sa isang variable or wala? So, gaya dito sa halimbawa natin, it's an example of time series chart. And we are comparing the number of confirmed cases with the number of active cases. So, yung white nire-represent yung confirmed cases, yung yellow sa active cases. So, sa isang tingin pa lang natin, and after we understand the meaning of the lines after looking at the legend, makikita natin kaagad yung comparison na parehas increasing yung number of confirmed cases and the active cases. So, ayun na nga yung tatlong types ng data presentation. Textual, tabular, graphical. At dahil na pag-uusapan na rin natin yung graphical presentation, let's proceed to the tips so, what are the do's and don'ts when we are creating our infographics or our graphs and charts? So, tip number one, you have to make the graphs accurate, clear, and simple. Yung dun sa accuracy part, hindi nga siya dapat tip lang eh. It should be a requirement for an infographic to be accurate. Because remember, you are gathering data you are organizing those data and then later on you will be presenting it. Meaning you will be sharing those information. And that's why you have to take good care of those information. You don't have to manipulate it. And you have to make sure that as you share it, it is accurate. So that you could share it with full integrity. Now these are some examples on how to do graphs or how to make sure that the graphs that you are presenting are really accurate. These are the things that you have to avoid. Talking about accuracy, tingnan ang example na to. 
I believe you are familiar to this if you are regularly browsing your Facebook and Twitter. Kasi nag-trend tong post na to um, around April. Bakit yun nag-trend? Kasi mali yung paggamit ng pie graph. Mali because if you look at the percentages here, 62%, 48%, 68%, kapag in mo lahat yan, that's more than 100%. So obviously, this graph, this infographic is not accurate. So you have to avoid that when you are using pie graph, you have to make sure that the sum of all your proportion or percentages must be 100%. Diba? That's the total. Walang magbibiyand nyan or walang mas bababa sa 100%. That's the first rule in creating a pie graph. So I just want to put emphasis on this tip number one, especially dun sa accuracy. Why is it important na... Uh, Masiguro natin na yung mga infographics na binabasa, ginagamit, ginagawa natin ay accurate. Bukod sa dahil binabahagi na natin ito, it's part of being honest, it's part of integrity. This is also our way in developing critical thinking skills. If you're an educator like me, you know how important it is to develop critical thinking among our students. Remember that in mathematics curriculum, K-12 mat uh, mathematics curriculum, the twin goals of it is to develop learners who are problem solvers and critical thinkers. If we will just let these small details, um, misleading graphs, and we will not correct it, and we will not be careful about it, then we are not developing citizens, learners, who are critical thinkers. Now, I will be sharing with you an article, a blog, written by Ryan McReady, which he titled, Five Ways Writers Use Misleading Graphs to Manipulate You in, in, uh, by Using Infographics. Alam natin na sobrang rampant na ngayon yung fake news, Diba? Yung mga misinformation. Pero ito, dumadagdag din ito sa mga nagiging waste ng iba para makapandaya, para makapang manipulate. And we should not let that happen. We have to be very careful. We have to scrutinize the details before we believe, before we um, accommodate those information. Kaya kailangan sinasala natin, especially these graphs, na madaling makapang mislead kung hindi tayo um, magiging careful. Ayan. First way, according to um, Mac Ready, according to the writer of this blog, first way to mislead readers by using infographic is by omitting the baseline of the graph. Why? What will be the effect when you omit the baseline? Kasi diba usually, or in most cases, the baseline of a graph is really zero. Kung titignan natin itong example na to, dito sa left side, yung baseline ay hindi nag-start sa zero. Instead, it started from 50. Kaya ang nagiging effect niya, ang layo ng gap ni group A kumpara kay group B and C. But if we did not omit the baseline and we include the zero, then we will have a more accurate information. Makikita natin yung katotohanan na konti lang naman yung difference ni group A, B, uh, ni group A from group B and C. So, that's the first way. So, kung halimbawa ikaw ay reader, basa ka ng infographic, tapos um, hindi mo na tinitignan, hindi mo kagad nakita na, uy, naka-omit pala yung zero dun sa or nakomit pala yung baseline, wala tayong zero, hindi nag-start sa zero yung um, graph natin, then it's, it will be a misleading graph. Kung titignan lang natin yung graph dun sa kaliwa, without being careful on the details, sabihin natin, ay, sobrang layo ng group A from group B and C. Diba? So that's the first way on how to mislead 
the readers by using infographic. And then according to the writer, the second way is through manipulating the y-axis. How is it? When you create an infographic that you do not consider the scaling. So kapag yung scale ng nasa uh, y-axis mo ay hindi proportional dun sa data mo, na para mas magmukha lang siyang makitid at hindi mo pinapakita yung um, well-balanced or well-proportioned scaling, then it will create a visual illusion which also makes your graph not accurate and you are, in one way or another, manipulating the readers because by comparing the first graph with the second graph, kitang-kita natin na parang okay lang yung nasa left side, wala masyadong difference. But if you really use a scale that is proportionate to the data, then that will be a more accurate and more reliable graph. Third one is what we call cherry picking data. Ibig sabihin nito, ikaw na creator ng infographic, ikaw na presenter ng datos, namimili ka lang nung ipepresent mo. So if you will be um, trapped in this kind of action when you are creating an infographic, it will actually create a false impression of the data. So, in our example, yung nasa left graph, misleading siya because you only include few months. So, pili lang yung months na nilagay mo, uh, sinama mo yung data. Unlike on the right side, mas malawak yung sinama niya every year so that we could see a wide range of the, uh, of the results of the differences. Kasi mas nakikita natin yung bigger picture on the right side. Unlike the left side, iilan lang yun eh. Kumbaga, it's not enough to summarize. It's not enough to make a conclusion out of those few data. So, third one is to avoid cherry picking. Mas maganda na mas malawak yung data na ipepresent natin at hindi pili lang. To avoid biases also and so uh, and to avoid unreliability of your infographic. So the fourth way on how to mislead readers by using infographic is when the creator used the wrong graph. So halimbawa dito, yung nasa kaliwa, bakit siya naging misleading? Because he created a graph. He used pie graph, but his purpose is to show differences among the three teams, team A, team B, team C. Kaya, anong nangyari? Kapag katinotal mo yan, mali na siya kaagad, more than 100%, because he did not use the correct graph. Kapag ang gusto mo ipakita ay differences among individuals, among groups, among categories, among variables, then you have to use, it's better to use bar bar graph. So, misleading tayo kung mali yung gamit. That's why you have to um, consider the guidelines on how to use a certain graph. Kailan ba ginagamit ang pie graph? Kailan ginagamit ang bar graph? And the other types of graph. The last item cited by Ryan McCready on his blog is when the writer goes against conventions. It will really create a misleading infographic and it will also give confusion among its readers, among its users. So in this example, we are using a geographical chart. So conventionally, ibig sabihin, uh, nakasanayan natin, ito yung alam natin ginagamit, nakasanayan, standard, Kapag ka may geographical chart and we talk about the density of population, it's conventional that the darker shade would mean higher population density. But on the left side, the reason why it's a misleading chart is because here, the creator of the infographic is actually using darker shades 
that would mean lower population density. So, binaliktad niya yung meaning. That's why it's creating a confusion and it's misleading its readers. So, again, that is tip number one. To make sure that the graphs we are creating are accurate, clear, and simple. Tip number two. Arithmetic scale should have equal increments to represent equal numerical units. So in order for us to understand this better, let's take a look at the following examples. Sa example natin to, mapapansin natin na dun sa may horizontal axis, nandun nakalagay yung numerical figures that represent the final grades of student A. However, tingnan nyo mabuti, from 82 to 84 follows, then 86, tas biglang naging 90, 95, tas biglang 97, lumit yung distansya, then 98, 99. So, it shows what? Inconsistent numerical figures. Walang equal increments yung mga numerical figures. That's why it's inaccurate and it's not proper. So, we have to avoid that. Dito naman sa second example natin, makikita natin na merong inconsistency rin pagdating sa scale figures. However, with our previous example, it's along the horizontal axis. Ngayon naman nandito sa may um, vertical axis. At wala ka talaga makikita ang pattern. So, we have to avoid this kind of um, mistake whenever we are creating our graphs. Kailangan equal yung increments, meaning equal yung distansya ng bawat numerical figure, ng bawat scale figure na ginagamit natin. Tip number three, there should have no visual illusions with the incorrect use of shadings or patterns. Okay, kapag gagawa tayo ng graph, madalas to, kapag sa pie graph, kailangan meron kang iba... Iba-ibang category. So, you are expected to use either different patterns or different colors. But you have to make sure that the patterns that you are using will not create any confusion on your um, viewers, on your readers, or anyone who will be using the infographic. Okay, tulad nito, the pie graph shows four different categories. Diba? So, four slices on the pie. It talks about Joy's daily spending hours. So, it's divided into four categories. It's studying, sleeping, house chores, or eating. However, meron naman siyang ginamit na pattern eh. Parang paslant na, paslant na lines. Kaya lang, what's, con what's confusing about this even though meron ka ng legend, kahit sabi natin may label pa yun ng percentages, makikita natin yung paggamit ng pattern. Nakakalito siya kasi nakakaduling. Halos magkamukha lang yung patterns na ginamit for 38% and 5%. Hindi natin alam, is it for studying or eating? Tapos yung sa 48% and 9%, is it sleeping or house chores? Though, medyo makikita naman natin yung sa shading, but it's always good to create a simple graph yet it will not create any visual illusion and hindi siya vague para sa mga user natin. So, meron naman kasi tayong mga options for different colors. Apat lang naman yung slices na yan. And we have a lot of patterns that can be used to represent each category. So, why not use those? Tip number four. We have to put chart titles, labels, legends, and scale figures. So, dito sa tip number 4, mahalaga na familiar tayo sa mga um, essential parts ng isang chart or graph. Hindi yung ibig sabihin na dahil meron ka ng pie na may slices, may percentages, okay na yan. Without even providing a title without even providing labels, legends, kung saan ikaw lang yung nakakaintindi ng graph mo. Hindi porket meron ka na dyang time series, nakaplat na yung line, nakaplat na yung bar graph, okay na yon. 
So we have to take into consideration the following titles, labels, legends, and scale figures. So counting recall tayo, if we are given a bar graph, just like this, we, I provided an example. So let's identify its essential parts. So dapat sa isang bar graph, meron kang makikita title, tapos itong nasa baba na makikita nyo na may color tapos may katabing category, that is what we call the legend para guided tayo kung anong ibig sabihin ng mga colored bars dyan. Third is what we call the axis labels. Diba meron tayo laging dalawang axis pag sa bar, pag sa bar graph. We have the y-axis and then the x-axis or the horizontal and then the vertical axis. So, importante na hindi lang natin yan basta lalagyan ng numbers, lalagyan ng categories. Dapat i-identify natin para saan yan. Halimbawa sa example natin dito, yung nasa horizontal axis dahil may numerical figure, ang ibig sabihin daw niyan ay yung final grades ni student A. At yung nasa Vertical axis naman, Filipino Science, English, Math, it is labeled as grade 8 major subjects. So, if you are the one using the graph, reading the graph, it will be easier for you to understand anong ibig sabihin ng number sa baba ng mga words na nasa vertical axis. Then next, ayan na nga, ito yung scale figures, yung mga numerical figures na ginagamit natin. Ang tawag din natin dyan ay scale figures. At yung mga nandyan sa vertical axis natin ay yung categories. Tip number 5, your graph must have a well-designed layout and is professional looking. So, here we need to consider also how will our infographic, our graphs would look like as you present it to your viewers, to your users. Because it adds to the credibility of the information. So, sayang naman yung mga datos, yung mga information natin. Kung okay naman, tapos biglang yung layout mo, hindi ganun ka ayos. At ang maganda sa ngayon, hindi na natin kailangan pang gumawa ng mga graphs, ng mga infographics manually. There are actually a lot of softwares, mobile apps, or online websites that could be helpful for us to have this ready-made template so kaya it will give you idea on how your infographics should look like. Para naman kapag ka-present mo na yung mga data mo, it will have a well-designed layout and ito yung sinasabi nating it's professional looking para mas magiging credible yung pag-present ng lahat ng information. Katulad na lang dito yung tinatawag nating spreadsheet app or software. Just like the common Microsoft Excel that we are using and even the Google Sheet. Another helpful app or software is what we call presentation app. So tulad nito yung Microsoft PowerPoint and yung Google Slides. So dito hindi lang... Kung kanina sa Microsoft Excel, we could explore it by using the Insert Chart tool. Here, hindi lang siya limited sa Insert Chart. Pwede rin tong makatulong kapag gagawa ka ng sarili mong layout for the infographic. So, you simply put your design, you explore designing your um, infographic on the slides, and then you save it as JPEG para ang magiging output niya ay image or photo. Then, if you're looking for a mobile app which could help you in creating a well-designed layout for infographics, I would suggest, I would recommend Canva app. So, dito, sobrang dami nilang well-designed layouts, ready-made na. Then, you just simply have to modify the information needed for your presentation. And then for online websites, you may visit Infographia, Vengage, SlideQuest if you are looking for possible layouts of infographics and they also give tips on how you can create one. 
So, ito yung mga makakatulong sa atin. I remember during this um, school year, as my final output in my advanced statistics class, I asked my students to create an infographic regarding the updates for COVID-19. So, dahil naka-community quarantine na tayo that time, I asked them to create an infographic then send it to me via messenger. Tapos, I recommended to use any app or pwede rin namang PowerPoint, any resources that they have, they don't need to um, go out to rent for computer shop. Ang kailangan lang nila is mobile app. So, they have to try um, some apps like Canva app when creating an infographic. And these are their outputs, sample outputs only. So, ito po yung ilan lang sa mga outputs ng mga former students ko, yung grade 8 sa advanced stat wherein they used Canva app in creating their own infographic. So, yung iba gumamit po ng Microsoft Word, ng PowerPoint, ng Excel, in order for them to have an output. But these students, some of these students also explored, also um, tried my suggestion of using a mobile app, which is Canva app, in creating their own infographic. So, ito yung mga outputs nila. Ilan lang po iyan. And... It was actually a good activity as my final output for them. Kasi bukod sa na enhance yung pagiging creative nila, pagiging resourceful nila, nabigyan din sila ng chance na talagang nagbasa sila na ano na ba yung updates tungkol sa COVID-19. Kasi I asked them to cite their sources. So tingin ko maganda rin nahahasa yung mga students natin sa ganitong type ng activity, yung sila yung magkikreate ng sarili nilang output, tapos uh, nagbabasa sila, they are well informed about what's happening in their surroundings, tapos nahahasa yung pagiging resourceful and creative, yung creativity din nila, tapos uh, nagiging exposed sila sa iba't ibang paraan kung paano ba gumawa ng ganito. Yung nakikita lang nila sa social media na nakapost, they will realize na kayang-kaya pala nilang gawin. So, to end, I just hope that um, as Filipinos, mas maging critical tayo sa pagtingin ng mga informasyon, sa pagtanggap ng mga informasyon, bukod dun sa mga nakikita nating misinformation, fake news, credits to the owner. I just hope that we are also observant with the use with the proper use of graphs and charts kapag kami mga nilalatag sa ating infographics. Kaya nga natawa ko nung nakita ko tong meme na to ito yung bago pa lang yung care emoticon sa Facebook tapos they release this kind of meme kasi dahil naging uh, madalas nga yung pagkakaroon ng mga bad charts na pinipresent sa mga news, sa television man yan, or sa social media, I think it's also a good step na nagiging aware tayo na may mga tendencies, even the media, there are tendencies na gumamit ng maling chart or gumawa ng maling chart. And I just hope that we could have more social media accounts, more news agencies that will be, uh, that will be careful in creating graphs. Kasi in this way, natuturuan din natin yung mga bata kung ano ba yung tama, ano yung dapat na ginagawa. So, katulad nito example, humanga talaga ako dito sa infographics na to. This is from Earthshaker Philippines. Bukod sa reliable ang mga binibigay nilang information, magaling din silang gumawa ng infographics. To think that these members or the members of this team are young professionals and most of them are just most of them are students college students only so how much more kapag kahalimbawang sila ay mga nakagraduate na bihasang bihasa na sila so this will be of their advantage ayan maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtutok pakikinig at panonood sa episode natin ito ng PNU Talks nawa ay meron po akong naibahagi sa inyo na makapuluhang kaalaman at kasanayan. At kung kayo po ay merong comment, suggestion, question, 
o kaya meron po kayo natutunan sa episode na to na gusto nyo pong i-share, i-comment lang po ito sa ating post. At huwag nyo pong kalilimutang mag-react, mag-like, at mag-share ng video na ito. Muli ako po si Mary Joy E. Villarreal ng Batch 2014 mula sa FSTEM na nagsasabing patuloy lang po tayong matuto at magturo. Sa muli, sumain nyo ang PNU Talks.